Hello, true believers. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 36 of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be updated about new videos, and for the sake of YouTube's search algorithm, please do hit the like button. If you wish to contact me, my email is dhog70 at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at doc underscore hog. Now, before I review Jawbreaker's Lost Souls, I want to promo a comic that I have backed recently called Tales from Nerosville. It is written by Jason Meadows, who was nice enough to send me PDFs of all three comics to take a look at, and I absolutely love them. They are some of the funniest stuff that I have seen in, uh, among indie comics yet. Um, I'll talk more about that after I review Jawbreakers, but let me just mention this. Um, you can get all three comics for $11. Not just PDFs, but the Dead Tree copies. $6 for the comics, $5 for shipping. Um, and that's an awesome deal for what I think are awesome comics. Okay, um, I'll post a link to the Indiegogo page for Tales from Nerosville uh, in the description below. Alrighty, uh, moving on to Jawbreaker's Lost Souls. So I recently received the Jawbreaker's graphic novel, which contains the first two Jawbreaker's comics and also the more recent Jawbreaker's Lost Souls. And I'm glad to know that Lost Souls actually came out after the first two issues, um, even though I guess Richard Meyer, uh, who, who wrote this, um, also known as Your, Your Boy Zack, um, considers Lost Souls to be sort of the intro comic. And I hope that's the case because Meyer has really hit his stride with Lost Souls and, you know, it'd be nice to see that he's going to continue that into, um, you know, Jawbreaker's God King. Okay, first, who are the Jawbreakers? Who are these superheroes turned mercenaries? Uh, there is the leader, Silkworm. He has psionic abilities, as you can see here. Uh, there is Cuffs. Uh, he has super strength, and he is also bulletproof. There's Hell Priest, who is, interestingly enough, a blind sniper. Uh, he has a type of infrared vision that allows him to see living and dead souls. Next is Knife Hand, whose powers are pretty much in his name. He is also a martial arts specialist. And there is Devil Dog, former Marine and weapons specialist. And finally, you have Kill Switch, who is their pilot. Okay, uh, this is the plot of Jawbreaker's Lost Souls. Uh, former superheroes who are now mercenaries help save a giant gorilla from a local warlord cyborg. Uh, pretty simple plot, and that's a really good start. Now, you open Lost Souls, and this is the opening page. And I, I think this is awesome. Uh, they've just saved Paris from this creature, and they did so by impaling it on the Eiffel Tower which, as you can guess, the French authorities are none too pleased with. But um, our heroes escape the, uh, from the authorities and they go to their new headquarters in Africa. And here is what I perhaps love most about this comic. The subtlety. Uh, this is Zaxi. She hires the Jawbreakers to take down this giant gorilla, and yes, it is giant. And yes, they knock out one of its eyeballs while defeating it, and that eyeball falls on two of the heroes. <laughs> well, it turns out that Zaxi is a double agent who is working for a local warlord who wants to cut up the gorilla and sell off the port parts, and the local warlord is a cyborg. Now, with the help of a shaman who has a connection to the gorilla, they learn that the gorilla is a lost soul. He uh, wandered into a vortex and was separated from his soul and is searching for it. And with the help of the shaman, the jawbreakers uh, help the gorilla come back to life, and he and the jawbreakers fight off the warlord. And the gorilla goes into another vortex to look for his lost soul. There really isn't much wrong with this comic. I mean, the, the only thing that sticks out uh, is this brief affair between Zaxi and Cuffs. Uh, that seemed a little contrived, but it doesn't really take away from the story. And this last one's a little picky, but there is, I, I think, an error on this page here. I think uh, what you've got here is Devil Dog and Hell Priest talking to each other. And I think in this first panel, um, 
the uh, the dialogue bubbles are uh, on the wrong characters. I think um, you know Devil Dog is supposed to be saying bet they didn't see that coming, and I think um, Hell Priest is supposed to be saying lame. Uh, the reason is in the next panel, um, you know, the next panel doesn't make a lot of sense um, if you read it otherwise. But you know those mistakes do happen, uh, and that's really the only one I can find here. But otherwise, this is really what a comic book should be. Good plot, good action, interesting characters, um, excellent artwork. And let me just mention the, the artists here. It's illustrated by John Malin, coloring by Brett Smith, and the lettering by Eric Weathers. And just to, to everyone who produced Jawbreaker's Lost Souls, um, bravo. Okay, next time I'm going to review Jawbreaker's 1 and 2. But for now, let's move on to Tales from Nerosville and why I think you should back it. The first two comics of the trio are called Lightning Balls 1 and 2, and the heroes are named Airball and Lightning Doug. Lightning Doug has the power to harness lightning, and Airball, who was once a brilliant weapons designer, has designed these balls that can do all sorts of uh, cool things. And that led him to try to become a superhero. And try is key here because these two are not particularly competent. Uh, and Airball is painfully aware of it, while Lightning Doug is, is a little more clueless about it. Uh, and, and that's part of the plot here, which is pretty easy to summarize. Um, Airball and Lightning Doug must stop a villain called Sinisterio, while also trying to become part of the superhero in crowd. And that makes for a very interesting uh, part of the story. Really gives the characters here some, some serious depth, you know. It's kind of like high school, you know, wanting to be part of the cool, uh, the, the, the cool in crowd, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, the writing is very good. The art here is fantastic. And I, I think what's best about Lightning Balls 1 and 2 uh, is, is the humor. Uh, as you can see on this page, Airball and Lightning Doug are trying to apprehend a villain. Lightning Doug doesn't stick to the plan. He tries to stop the villain, and you get this line. Doug, no! My balls think you are attacking me! <laughs> and this is the end result. And, and that's not the half of it. For the most part, it's Doug that doesn't have the, the Lightning Doug that doesn't have the filter that stops him from saying embarrassing things. And it is just fun throughout. And, you know, what's best is that's only two of the three comics that you get here. Uh, the third is called Retribution. Uh, and it involved uh, a police officer named Captain Green who is trying to track down, uh, you know, who, who or, or what is killing criminals in and around the Nerosville boardwalk. Uh, it is also a lot of fun, and it has different artwork than does Lightning Balls, and it is different in a good way. And it is the right kind, and, and that's because it is the right kind of artwork for making scenes like this humorous. And one more thing I'll say about Retribution, um, you know, let's, let's look at the opening page here and how good uh, I, I think it is. Um, the first three panels are like an overhead camera shot that is zooming in. You know, we can, in the first one you can barely see a crowd and, and a couple of objects around it. And then it comes into focus and we see that it's a crowd and police cars that have, um, uh, that are, you know, at the end of a dock and obviously, you know, something's happened here. And uh, then we meet, uh, you know, Captain Green. Uh, it's just a really good opening, and it's indicative of just how good this comic book is, is throughout. Um, so again, you'll like these comics. They're tons of fun, and it's only $11 for all three. Um, I'll provide a link to the Indiegogo campaign in the description below. Uh, there are still over 50 days to back it. And as far as I'm concerned, we need to make this happen. All right. That music means that it is time for Hogg's Headlines, all the news that Doc Hogg wants to report on. Dateline, how to save the rise of Skywalker. Doubtless that Disney has spent hundreds of millions on the rise of Skywalker, and if it is anything like the mess that was The Last Jedi, it risks losing its shirt at the box office. So, here is a cheap way for Disney to recover its losses. Get rid of the actual movie Rise of Skywalker and simply charge tickets to see this guy on a screen. Uh, 
Yes, this is Zola, a gray seal who can not only sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but also the Star Wars theme. <laughs> So, hey, Disney, give Zola a shot. It's more entertaining than da Daisy Ridley, and, you know, just don't let Ryan Johnson direct the seal. And for a parting shot, here is Zola's impersonation of Renfamous trying to talk about Comicsgate. Dateline, there just isn't a lot to do in Belgium. A Belgian man sat on a toilet for nearly five days this week in a bid to set a world record. Jimmy Dufresne, a 48-year-old who is learning to be a bus driver, set himself a challenge of sitting for 165 hours on a toilet set up specially for the feet in the middle of a bar, but gave up on Friday morning after 116 hours. Dufresne said, self-mockery is the best humor there is. Why am I doing this? Why not? There is nothing I like more than people making fun of me, because then I can do the same with them. That, and it takes an awful long time for me to work that burrito out. Dufresne said that he had discovered that someone else had managed to sit on a loo for 100 hours straight before, but that there was no official world record for sitting on a toilet. Really? Well, here's my shocked face. <gasps> Alrighty, that's all for now. I'll put links to those articles in the description below. Until next time, have a very nice day. The Subtlety.